All right, so you found math light, and this is volume of pyramids, cones, and spheres. All right, so if, if I were in the classroom with you right now, I would literally take a cylinder the same size, that's interesting, the same size as this cone, right? In other words, they have the same height. They come to the same value, and the bases are exactly the same, right? And what I would do then is... I would fill up the cone with water, of course, turn it upside down, and ask you, what will it do if, how much of the cylinder will it fill up if I pour the water in, right? So again, understand the heights are exactly the same. The area of the bases are exactly the same, right? Only one's a cylinder and one is a cone. How much will it fill? Well, if I were in the classroom and I were showing you, when I poured the first one in, it would come up to about there. And when I poured the second one in, it would come up to about there. And when I poured the third one in, it would come right up to the top. So what's the relationship between the volume of a cone and the volume of a cylinder? And it's one-third. So I hope that'll stick in your mind. And you can do the exact same thing with a pyramid with a prism the same size. It's going to be one-third area of the base times the height. So what I like my students to remember is because it comes to a point, it's going to be one-third. Because it comes to a point, it's going to be one-third. So if you look at this cylinder here um, and you look at the pyramid, let's make sure we understand what the height is. So we're going to have area of the base. So let's look at our pyramid first. So here's area of the base, right? And then times the height. Notice the height is perpendicular to the base and hits the vertex of the pyramid. Now when you talk about a cone, again, area of the base. And then the height is going to be perpendicular. And it's going to hit that vertex of that cone, all right? So one-third area of the base times the height, all right? Let's work a few problems. So how about this one? Find the volume of the pyramids. So you look at that and say, okay, that's a pyramid comes to a point. And because it comes to a point, when you first write your formula, you remember the one-third. Area of the base times the height. Now, by, again, by using area of the base, we're going to take care of all the different kinds of pyramids. This is a rectangular pyramid. It could be a, um, uh, a triangular pyramid. It could be a pentagonal pyramid, etc., right? And so this, the shape of the base could be a trapezoidal pyramid, which are odd looking. So one third and what kind, what's the base? Base times height, right? So the one third, the area of the base is base times height. And then again, don't forget the height of the whole shape. And, and I see students do this all the time. You got to be careful here. Here's area of the base and here's height of the whole shape. So by writing this formula, you have it right there. And this is the way you should go about approaching the problem. All right, so the one-third is the one-third. What is the base of our base? 10 inches. What is the height of the base? In red there, right? 8 inches. And what is the height of the whole pyramid? 12 inches. Okay, so now we're ready to multiply this all out. You use your calculator. But if I divide the 12 by the 3, I get 4. And 4 times 80, right, 10 times 8, is going to be 320. And what are our units? Inch times inch times inch, inches cubed, right? 320 cubic inches. Does that make sense? So what did we do? We did one-third the area of the base times the height. One-third area of the base times the height, and we're able to figure out the volume of that pyramid. Let's do another one. All right, so how about this one here? All right, so you look at it, say that's a cone, but it comes to a point, right? When it comes to a point, again, we're thinking one-third. Comes to a point, one-third. One third area, the base times the height. Now, when you look at the base, what kind of shape? So there's our one third. And what's the area of the base? 
pi r squared, right? Times the height of the whole shape. All right, there we go. Now, let me just remind you of something again. In our example here, we're given 8 millimeters as the radius. If they do give you the circumference, you're going to have to deal with that. And later on in an example, I'll show you that, how you would deal with the circumference. But we're ready to punch in values. Again, be organized. Start with the formula. All right, one-third, pi, 3.14. Again, if your teacher wants you to use the pi button, use the pi button. Times the radius squared, 8 millimeters squared. Do you agree? All right, don't just be copying, right? Be a thinker. And what's the height of our shape? And hopefully you're thinking 15 millimeters, right? All right, there we are. We're going to punch this into our calculator and take care of everything. Uh, remember, evaluate all exponents first. And so we're going to do 8 uh, squared is 64 times our 3.14 times our 15. And I really could have divided the 3 into it if I wanted to. And then we're going to divide by 3, right? And so I end up with 1,004.8. 1,004.8. And these are millimeters cubed, right? Squared millimeters times millimeters is millimeters cubed. And volume should always have cubic units. So that's what you're looking for, all right? And again, if your teacher wants you to use the approximate symbol, right? Two tildes, then that's fine because we are rounding off pi. And even if you don't round off pi, it's still approximately because pi never ends. Yes. Never-ending pie. I would love to have never-ending pizza pie. Oh, I guess I would be a lot more rotund than I am. All right, let's get the spheres. So that's pyramids and cones. You can handle it one-third area of the base times the height. All right. When you see a sphere, and again, I'm trying to picture a sphere here, and hopefully my shading helped you to see that. Don't see a circle. See a sphere like a ball, right? Like the earth, uh, etc. A globe is a sphere. All right. Now, when you think about the area of a circle, you think of pi r squared. But what are going to be our units for anything that is volume? They're going to be cubed. So guess what? It's not pi r squared. It's pi r cubed, right? Okay. Now, the only other thing we have to do to account for the formula is, and I shouldn't have used a 4 here with a 4 radius. I'm sorry, is a four-thirds. So you, you got the one-third thing going with the um, pyramid and cone, but you got a four on top. So it's four-thirds. Every time, four-thirds times pi times the radius cubed will give you the volume of a sphere. Works great. All right, if you know the formula, it works great. All right, so we got our first example here. So we got a sphere. It's got four for a radius. And they want us to find the volume. How would you always start a problem like this? And I hope you're thinking with the formula. Start with that formula. Write it down. Remember, every time you write it, it helps you remember it. Okay. So let's sub in. And if you want to do the problem yourself, oops, I got all the values in there. All right. Subbed in there. I didn't realize I had all my values in there. So 4 thirds is the 4 thirds. Pi 3.14. And then our 4 is cubed, right? So 4 thirds times 3.14 times our radius cubed. All right, now the rest is just a calculator issue. But let me let me explain how I would punch this into my calculator. All right, so follow along. Look at the screen here. I would do 4 cubed first, right? Evaluate all exponents. And just a reminder, how do you do cubes? How do you do cubes? All right, there's, there's two different ways. Some calculators have a cube button. So they have like a, an X. Oops, let me get in a color that you can see better. They have an X cubed button. If you don't have an X cubed button, you might have an X to the Y button or a Y to the X button. Or you may have a tilde button. Well, not a tilde, a chevron button. So you would punch in the base. All right, in all these cases, it would be four. And then hit this button. Four, hit this button and then do the exponent three. Four, hit this button and then do the exponent three. Or four, hit this button and then do the exponent three. 
All right, you got to learn how to punch things in your calculator. So make sure you're following along with your calculator out and getting all these things down. All right, so 4 cubed is 64. Take that and multiply it times the 3.14. So 64 times 3.14. And then multiply that times the top, the 4. So times 4 and hit equals or enter. All right, you got 803.84. Now divide by the 3 on the bottom. So divide it by 3. And there you are. And you can change the order there, right? Commutative property of the multiplication before you divide by the bottom. Okay. So multiplying all that out, I'm going to round to one decimal place. So this is 267.9. And we had no units. So what are you going to put? Units cubed, right? 267.9 cubic units of volume in there. So again... Think about this. Uh oh, I'm in trouble. I got to draw. Think about how many cubes. Oh, brother, it's ugly. I am such a bad drawer. <laughs> That's why I teach math. Yes, all right, all right. let's redeem myself on that. It's a little hard drawing on this, so I'm going to use that as an excuse. Oh, brother. Now, oh, that's a little better for me. All right. And so how many of these cubes are going to fit in there? 267.9, almost 268 of the cubes will fit inside that sphere. <laughs> All right, let's try one last problem. All right, find the volume of the sphere. All right, so if you look at this scenario here, a little bit different, right? This is a little bit different scenario right here. Because in this one, we're given a circumference. All right, so I would still start this problem exactly the same way. I'm going to say that's a sphere. I'm going to say my formula is volume of a sphere, four-thirds pi r cubed. Okay, good. As soon as I go to run my formula, and this is the real world, I start punching in my numbers. All right, a four is a four and a four-thirds, and a pi is a 3.14, and I go to do my radius, and I say, whoa, I don't have a radius. I need the radius. Because certainly that number is not the radius. And you have to be able to recognize that a number like this along the great circle, remember that, is a circumference. Okay, so how are we going to turn a circumference into a radius? Do you remember the formula for circumference? All right, there were two, pi d, but we don't want to use that one. Let's use the one with the radius. And what are you thinking? Circumference equals, what are you thinking? All right, 2 pi r, right? Circumference equals 2 pi r. Okay. Well, I can use this formula to solve for the circumference. I'm sorry, for the radius. All right, so put in the circumference. 43.96 meters equals 2 times 3.14 times r. And what are we going to do? We're going to isolate the variable, right? We're going to isolate the radius. Okay, so let's simplify. 43.96 meters equals 2 times 3.4 is 6.28. Again, if your teacher wants you to use your pi button, you're going to have to do all this in one step times our radius. But remember, things multiply times the variable. You move by multiplying by the reciprocal. And again, as is almost always the case, we can use the shortcut and just simply divide by the 6.28. That's going to tell us the radius. And so I'm going to take 43.96, and I'm going to divide it by 6.28. And this ends up a perfect 7. And again, I have my units in their meters. Now, again, if you're going to get a decimal, you're going to have to figure out how much you're going to round. But if it were me, I would just use that number in my calculator for the next step. Because obviously, this is what happens now, right? This 7 meters gets dropped into here. And what would be the next step in running this formula is to cube the number. So again, see if you can follow this. If you're using the pi button, it'll be 400, it'd be 43.96, divide it by 2, and divide again by pi. So divide by 2, divide again by pi. So the, the, the real number is 6.996451298, etc. Leave that in your calculator and now cube it, and it'll be more close to the actual answer. All right, but we're using 7. All right, so let's go ahead and cube 7. 7 cubed. 
All right, and that was not 7 cubed. 7 cubed is 343. Now, again, you can do it in any order. I just like to work backwards, do this, then that. Some people like to work forward and do this times that. Either way, you're going to get the right commutative property. All right, I'll go forward this time. 343 three times 4 times 3.14. And what does that equal? 4308.08. But again, I got to divide by that 3, right? Don't forget the denominator. Divide by that 3. And my calculator just zeroed on me. All right, hold on one second. We'll get there. 7 cubed times 3.14 times 4 equals divided by 3 equals. And I have 1,436.02. So because I'm rounding, I'm going to round to one decimal place, 1,436. Point oh, and I like my, my students to end with the point oh to show that we rounded off to that decimal place. What are our units? Meters cubed. And there's the volume of that sphere. All right, so two things. We did this lesson. We took care of the volume of a pyramid or a cone. And instead of area, area of the base times the height, we have to do one third. So one third, area of the base times the height. And we also learned how to do the volume of sphere, four-thirds pi r cubed. All right? Volume of pyramids, cones, and spheres. Hey, this is a fun chapter. I hope you enjoyed it. And, uh, you know, when you get to geometry in ninth or 10th grade, then you really go a little bit further with all these aspects. But you've laid a good foundation with what we've learned here uh, in these lessons. All right.